Saya Bun. Saya Aji. Saya Alan. Saya Aman. Saya Adun. Kami anak-anak Sile. Dina, abang manusia. Macam orang-orang lain. Dina jenis seorang bang. Tak campur sangat. Sebab bagi Mama senang je, Din. Kita ni manusia. Kan? Manusia mana yang tak buat silap? Kita bukan sempurna. Aku tak boleh buang sayang kepada dia. Sungguh aku sayang dia. Ni aku ni macam ni. Semua untuk dia. Kau cucu tak dengan diri kau? Luar dalam. Betul kau cucu? Setan ni kau macam ni? Kau apa? Lelaki? Buat ke? Sekarang dah pakai macam ni pula. Lepas ni kau nak buat apa? Kau nak potong anu kau tu? Aduh! Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. So today we gonna share with you some of our interview session with Malaysian film producer and director. I believe from the early clip you might guess who she is. Well, she is no other Raja Azmi. Let's have a look for some interview that we have prepared for you. Raja Azmi bin Raja Sulaiman, seorang penerbit filem, TV series, komik, buku, novel, penulis juga dan yang terbaru uh, sejak kebelakangan, empat tahun kebelakangan ini saya dah menjinakkan diri berlakon dan menjadi pelakon. My company is too long to share because I started company called Entertainment Enterprise Sengia Bahad and long time ago back in 1993 and then from there I I produced film I produced comic and then I I built another company called Penerbitan Jazz there from there I do animation and I produce uh, comics again also continue doing comics and books and novels and especially animation and continue doing film with the same company and then I have pengedaran jazz uh, and uh, a lot of things lah so that's uh, here a bit here and there the background of my company okay and the most popular produced by my production company is animation anak-anak sidik during the 90s and then film uh, Black Widow Wajah Ayu is my first film I produce based on the novel I wrote myself a novel called Black Widow and then um, uh, I made a film out of it called Black Widow Wajah Ayu I also wrote the script uh, for that uh, film and it's directed by Uwe Haji Shari and then I produce um, many many other films Okay, continue from the first one just now. Okay, most of the genre that uh, I produce, my film, most of my film that I produce written by me, okay? But some are not. But anyway, the genre that I always choose for my film is uh, quite out of the box, you know? Uh, so, if I were to explain uh, one by one, it's going to be... A long long time to explain but maybe you all can just google it and see Black Widow it's about a woman who loves spiders and believe that she has been cursed uh, her family has been cursed like a spider whereby every time she had a man the man will die every time she loved the man the man will die that goes for her husband and she was worried until she doesn't want to get married so that's about it um, and the next film was called uh, Pure Gold Mas Melayu. It's about adventurers, about a couple looking for gold, buried uh, in the jungle, and try to dig the gold that been buried long, long time ago. And what they found was the golden love between the two of them. Uh, that was a bit cliche kind of movie. But after that, I produced another call, uh, Cinta Doratus Ella. Okay, Cinta Doratus Ella is about a golfer. It's another. Mm, movie written by me uh, the script was written by me the book the novel was also written by me a novel called Cinta Saratus Ella and it's about a golfer who fell in love with, a, with the owner of the golf field blah 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 and it's kind of simple uh, kind of uh, love story love affairs and the most controversial story uh, movie that I've ever produced was the 
Sari biru at the same time And then Anu dalam botol Which is dot 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 dalam botol It's about transgender Ah, that is the most controversial I think I was the first producer To produce kind of movie In Malaysia, in this country It became a big taboo And it was such a big controversial Until people all over the world was curious about it how can a muslim country like malaysia produce such film so thank god uh, i got an approval from uh, lpf to produce it from jakim and blah 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 but I, even though i had a bit of hassle time to go through in order to produce that film but it managed to be done and that film was directed by k rahman after that i produced um, Oh yeah, Cinta 200 Elo was directed by Shadan Hashim. Haru Biru was directed by Shadan Hashim. And Shadan Hashim also a director who direct uh, animation, uh, Anak-Anak City. Uh, he's also the one. So anyway, uh, I produce animation, Anak-Anak City. Uh, so that was it. Mm, other than that, TV series, TV drama, a couple of TV drama. Yes, I do have. When I produce animation on Anna CD, uh, I target, of course, I target children, you know. And when I produce films, most of my film was supposed to be for adults only. Majority of my films are for majority, uh, for adults only. Now I have a latest film I produce called Jerangkung Dalam Almari, which is horror. Uh, the genre is horror. Jerangkung Dalam Almari is uh, produced in uh, uh, 2019 supposed to be out on the cinema last year but due to the pandemic uh, COVID-19 so it's been postponed until now I have no idea when I'm going to produce uh, and when I'm going to show it on cinema or I just might as well sell it to the different channel of media social uh, or TV channel or whatever maybe I haven't decided yet that will be up to the marketing side to, to decide uh, <laughs> Okay, of course we have targeted. Like Jerangkung Dala Amari, my latest film, I targeted audience who loves horror movies because it's a very serious horror drama. If you go there, um, those who love to, to, to study or to learn more about spiritual, about ghosts, about devil, about whatever, you should watch Jerangkung Dala Amari because in every each of us have Jerangkung inside us, you know what I mean? So it's about uh, the evil side of ourselves, uh, okay? I think I'm going to answer it very simple and easy. I would love to see if it's more local or more Malaysian watch Malaysian movie because it's been like it's been like a, a traditional, you know. It's, we we got to kill that tradition, uh, sort of like Malay movie is not a good movie, you know. Why should we watch our local movie? All Malay movie are bad. No, which is not true. Not all local movie are not good. There are some local movie are good, and we should just go and watch, and we 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 will see. And so that's that's my hope. In the 2021, I hope uh, more Malaysian uh, love to watch, uh, go to cinema and watch Malaysian movie. Mm, I think I I hope my wish will come true. I think that most of the producers wish I think. So please, uh, not all Hollywood movie are good. Also, not all every other movie are good. But of course, there are some good ones. It's just that they produce thousands of movies per year. So you see hundreds of movies, good ones. But in Malaysia, we, 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 we produce less than 100 movies a year. So you can, but you should watch all and expect one or two or at least 10 are good, you know? Okay?
Well, a trend is always a trend. You have to follow the trend. Yeah, everybody loves to watch. Me too. I love to watch a movie in the Netflix, in the Astro Bed, blah, blah, blah. Where at home I can sit with my husband. We watch together, blah. My whole family. If it's movie, it's about family. About the whole family. If it's movie about adults movie, you can only watch together with your husband. And then you can only watch it in your room or through the phone and blah, blah, blah. But whatever trend is always a trend. But it's never the same to watch movie in cinema. You know, on big screen. You can never get such a big, huge big screen at home. Never. You never have a big screen on your phone. Never. Because... The feel of it, the satisfaction of watching movie is on the big screen. When you don't watch it on the big screen, you just get a story. You just get a story. You feel you can cry a bit here and there. You get scared, but you know it's you know surround you. There's somewhere on the the other table. Your family is still eating and you're watching horror, so you don't feel. But if you watch it in a cinema, in a big, uh, dark room, uh, you know, big screen is totally satisfaction. It's different. You go to the cinema, you have, and it's a kind of a family get together, you know, go jalan jalan, have fun, uh, buy popcorn, sit down. It, the feel is different from watching it on handphone and at, on TV at home. So it's just another. Uh, kind of satisfaction which I uh, which I think the trend will never end so when you talk about the trend now on Netflix on TV at home on uh, handphone yeah it is current trend but I don't think this trend is going to last long I don't know but the trend watching on cinema has been there since what since you never you never knew it since when when was the first program produced in uh, in the cinema? Back in 1890, if I'm not mistaken. More than 100 years ago. Yeah? Uh -huh. So, it's still, no, still people go. It's just that cinema has to be closed because of the pandemic 19. Or else, cinema will still, still be reliable for movie. It will never end. But let's follow the trend, but still, why not watch it on the TV, watch it on the handphone, and watch it again on the cinema. That's it. We always face challenge every day, everywhere, not just about producing film or drama, it's about life, you know. First challenge, I feel, is to get a good script. That is the first challenge that ever any producer will, will have to face to, to buy or to have a good script. And from the script, you have to choose a director who can absorb the script. Most directors, they want to direct their own script nowadays. But most script writers, they don't know how to direct. So there are directors who can write. So me as a producer, I write also. I, I write screen, screenplay. I produce most of the, most of, majority of my film with my screenplay. So but the challenge is all about the script. So how the producer together with the director and the script writer to absorb and blend themselves together to, to have what is actually supposed to be in the screen, in the story. And then another challenge is a proper or the right actor and actress. Yeah, the right cast. And from there, wow, step by step, they're all challenged. See, every time, then from the cameraman, from the crew, everywhere is a challenge. Every, the whole team is the challenge. But the challenge would be lesser and simpler when everybody managed to work together. Yeah, you know? So, well, because I love to produce film so much, it's just, uh, I find it very difficult, yes, but it is a challenge that I would love to face every day. Yeah. A challenge that I love to face every day, okay?
Okay, to me, the impact is of course very bad in a way but right now I started acting as well and then we have to stop production stop and then sometime a, a, a crew have started the whole team have started shooting and then halfway have to break and then have to continue again wow that is the impact that producers most producers have to face because the, when you start shooting the budget is out when you stop shooting halfway the budget continue you know the budget doesn't stop it continue flowing 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 because the the team has still to adjust here and there you know except for the talent or the cast will have to to just wait but the, the production team is continue to you know to change places to find a uh, suitable places to change location and blah 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 a lot of things still to continue doing and then the, because of the time issue uh, there are certain things that have to burst the budget you know like example i give you okay today we should at this location suddenly uh, after the effect of the pandemic have to break shooting for two weeks and then suddenly after two weeks you want to continue there's a few more scenes to finish at that location but we can't continue with that location anymore we have to change the location and i have to go back to the dif- uh, and, and i have to go to the uh, different location but to start all over again scenes or past that parts that we have done in that former location see how much we have to waste and the cost is going to be double up for that certain period you know uh, is that is one of the example of the impact of, of a producer of course budget everywhere and don't talk about budget alone we talk about expenses everything I think I don't have to answer the question everybody know that that, that, that answer already is all so immunous already except for those with lots and lots of money you know <laughs> Okay, the impact in the film industry, of course, uh, to me, because the cinema is closed, so people cannot go to cinema, films, cap, some film, some, sometimes film when you keep for too long, the, especially when you do film about current issue, you know, uh, suddenly now the cinema is stuck almost a year, and then the, the, the film that is supposed to be uh, in, a, in a cinema, the, uh, the genre or the issue is about certain certain kind and then when the issue is proper to be shown in uh, 2020 suddenly when you show it in 2021 the issue dah basi ha, contohnya lah the issue has uh, rotten already so it's no longer suitable to be viewed in the cinema but still you know let's see if the movie is about a current issue is about some history happened in the, in the country. It's supposed to be out this 2020 last year, early last year, supposed to be out to be seen on cinema. So everybody will go, oh, oh we must watch that. It's so current issue. This, this issue is just happening. Suddenly, now it's been a year and you want to show that movie about that. Nobody wants to watch it anymore because, yeah, this is what I mean. Uh, it's, it's quite just, I hope you understand uh, it's been uh, not uh, suitable anymore because uh, the issue is uh, apa, what shall I say, dah basi lah. Uh, so like, how can I say in English? Uh, no idea. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. The rest of the film industry is just the same as affected as everywhere. Nothing compared to company or industry that make glove or mask. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for the question.